Hollywood was a very bad time. Hollywood was a time of fear. Hollywood was a time of exploitation. Hollywood is a prostitution camp. Hollywood is a place where very few people, I think, are able to keep their integrity. Uh, of course, there are many people who have their integrity in Hollywood, and these are the people I respect who were able to keep this integrity. It was a time uh, that was not especially that happy. The best part of Hollywood, of course, was finding the best friend of my life, Mr. Payton Price. Uh, and he's, because of Payton, I didn't lose my integrity. And he was astonished by this new world that he'd been catapulted into, and perhaps the quality of the people that he had found. He found it not to be the usual Hollywood, hard, hustling, commercial type of people, but youngsters who were really interested and dedicated to film. Because I was teaching the film aesthetics and the film principles and the film techniques. You cheated me and made me lonely. I tried to be Peyton Price played godfather to bigger stars than Dean Reed. Gene Seberg, Dick Clark, the Smothers Brothers came under his spell at his classes at Warner's. So did the young Everly Brothers. We had signed with Warner Brothers Records and, and in the process we also went to the Warner Brothers uh, Drama School, which was taught by a man named Peyton Price. And, and Dean was... Uh, a close friend of uh, Peyton's and I was in the class and uh, so that's where I first met Dean and um, kind of became quite close with Peyton who was um, an extraordinary man one of the major mentors in my life and Dean's also too and uh, um, Peyton was what you'd call a life teacher he had his theory was basically in acting that you uh, you're only as good an actor as you are a human Like Phil Everly, most people I met loved Peyton Price, but there were a few who thought he pulled Dean's strings. Anyway, for the next 25 years, he watched out for Dean wherever Dean was. Meanwhile, there were visits from old friends. Peyton Price turned up in Schmuckwitz, a sick old man. Soon after he left, he died. Renata told me Dean was so distraught, he once tried to wander out in the snow naked and nearly died himself. And then, reluctantly, Phil Everly came through the Berlin Wall to play a concert with his old friend. It was very depressing, in fact. It had me scared when I got off the plane because it's snowing and all of that. Corrugated steel building with a guard. Of course, Dean was on the other side. Dean was so popular there and so well known that, that um, your treatment once you got in there was, was phenomenal, the fact that you were coming there to see him. but. Um, I was scared until I saw him, actually. I told him that, too. Phil found East Berlin a little less welcoming. First room I had was so narrow. Maybe I was a spoiled American that I am, you know. But, I mean, you had to see it to believe it. And I called Dean. I said, I can't stay here two weeks. Dean got me to a corner room, which was twice as big, and got me one of the two televisions in that hotel. You could see uh, West Berlin television, so I watched Bonanza in German, you know. But it was so American, I loved it. <laughs> Dean was a good laugher, and um, you could talk politics, because as we may not have agreed on our... Because I was a Reagan supporter, you know, so I shows you how far I was from Dean. But I respected Dean's political views, because Dean had political views that he lived. Bye-bye, my love, goodbye. There goes my pain. 